I hereby call the Finance Committee to order for Monday, October 21st, it being time. Uh, with that being said, we'll go right into the agenda, please. Number one, Madam Clerk. Of Eric S. Smith as Special Police Officer of the City of Brockton for a one-year term ending January 2020, invited Eric Smith, Stephen Williamson, Acting Chief of Police. Motion to recommend favor. Second. Second. Motion on the floor is properly second in favor of recommendation back to the council. If you're in favor, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. Go on to number two, please. Reappointment of William Sharnick, 82 Main Street, P.O. Box, PO Box 941, Marion, Mass., as constable in the city of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited William Sharnick. Mr. Sharnick, you here? Good evening, sir. If you could just come forward to the podium, please. How are you tonight? I'm well, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for being thank you here. for inviting me. Appreciate it. Do you have a statement for the committee at all? I've been a constable for well over 40 years for the city of Brockton, and I consider it a privilege. Thank you, sir. Motion to recommend second. favorably. Second. This motion on the floor was properly second. Favorable back to the full council. If you're in favor, if you're opposed, that motion carries. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Favorable back to the full council, please. Number three. Reappointment of Carlos Verla, 40 Briarcliff Road, Brockton, to the Brockton Community Cable Television Board for a term of three years to fulfill the unexpired term ending September 2021. Invited Carlos Varela, Mark Lindy, BCA General Manager. Carlos, I did get an email from Mr. Lindy earlier today. Unfortunately, he couldn't join us. He had a conflicting uh, schedule appointment tonight. Uh, but this is a reappointment. I don't. Motion to recommend favorable. Second. This motion on the floor is properly second favorable. Back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. Thank you. Number four, please. Order, an order for the city to seek authorization for the acceptance of streets in the city of Brockton. Purpose, common convenience and necessity requires the acceptance of streets in the city of Brockton as public ways for purposes of public access, repairs, snow removal, emergency vehicle access, maintenance, and care of all the roads in the city of Brockton. Invited, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner. Mr. Commissioner, good evening. Good evening, Councilor. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Newton, um, good evening. I'm going to let Howard talk on this, if it's okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Howard. Good evening. I just had uh, Councilor pass out. Uh, some of you are aware of the procedure by which streets become public in, in any municipality within the Commonwealth. Uh, some of you may not have received those, uh, but I did have her pass out uh, the procedure, and that's covered in Mass, that's mass State Law. There's no way around that. Uh, that is the procedure, and it's the way we are doing them. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Cruz, please. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Howard. You're How many years? 60, September the 14th. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so the way we're doing it now is proper and legal? Correct. It's the only way that we can do it. Mm -hmm. And the idea of doing them all at once? It would be an impossibility. I, if you, When you read those, you'll, you'll see why. One of the things is... These have to be, a public hearing has to be held. Every single abutter has to be <laughs> notified of the time and the place of the public hearing. So obviously doing them in, in mass uh, is, is next to impossible. In addition, once the council accepts that, those, each of those council orders have to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. We have 30 days after the, after the passage by the council to record those. And well, obviously, it's an expensive proposition to do. I don't think that we could do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Lally, followed by Beauregard, please. Thank you. I, I just want to add um, one thing. Thank you, Howard. Uh, in our conversations about making uh, roads public, uh, you've also mentioned that a lot of these roads don't have a proper survey. Uh, and That's the correct. cost the cost of the survey uh, is not something the city really you know, can afford a lot of the times. No, and there's no way for me to calculate for you what it would cost to serve these. I yeah. put together a list of all of the private ways in the city, and I've noted on there that an asterisk beside that street means that it must be surveyed and must have a plan. A plan is re a requirement of state law in a city. It's not in a town, but in a city, it's a requirement of state law. Uh, you'd be accepting a lot of streets. For instance, uh, we have dozens and dozens of what they call paper streets. These are streets that were created on a plan whenever, back in the 1890s, the early 1900s, uh, prior to the adoption of the subdivision control law. Um, a lot of those streets are paper. They exist only on that plan. There's nothing on the ground. So why would you want to accept it? The other thing, when you accept these streets, you've accepted liability. If there are deficiencies in the street, 
you are liable for them. We've had these discussions many times. Uh, uh, several city solicitors have mm. said no. The planning board has always said no. But uh, Brockton's one of the only communities that accepts streets in the, in, in the condition that they are. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council, please. Thank you. I had filed this. The idea was to begin the dialogue because the number one request by property owners in this city is to get their streets paved. I believe it's safe to say, and this is no reflection on the DPW, that more streets need to be paved than are paved um, to the Everyone specification. Everyone agrees with that. And so, having said that, the, that's a constant request by residents. I'm not alone in this. So I figured to start getting this going, this was filed. It went in front of planning, and what was discussed there was maybe beginning a, jo a joint committee or task force to have the members, you know, representative of the DPW, representative planning, and uh, you know, part of city councils want to attend, and in all, and quite residents to be able to discuss another way to address this situation. Because we know one thing that we can honestly say tonight is none of these streets are going to get better. So it just seems that maybe at, th at this point there might be another way to do something. Now, I realize the laws that exist now prevent us from doing that, but maybe that's something that needs to be revisited at some point and that's why I uh, propose this because so many people were begging for their streets to be paved and and when they hear that they can you know it's going to be another 30 years for them to get their streets paved and meanwhile their cars are getting wrecked and um, you know there's uh, flooding and etc in the streets that's that's where their concerns and frustrations come in and rightly so so that that that's why this was proposed to begin a dialogue on this. Uh, just, just be aware that sure. accepting these streets doesn't increase our, our state aid in any significant way. It's a very small amount. It's not a one for one. Uh, there's a very complicated formula that the state uses to calculate what, what the city gets in Chapter 90 funds. And it's not, a, it won't be a significant amount of money if we accepted every one of these streets. No, I realize. The reason I put that out there is because so many people don't even realize that they, quote, live on a private way. And, you know, and that's, that's part of it. And it just seems that the steps that the people need to go through as residents in this city to get their streets accepted when all this time they were, first of all, under the impression that their streets were public ways because of everything that transpired and because they're looking to get their streets accepted because that's a step required to get their streets paved. It, ju it just seems like a great deal for the residents to be going through. Now, again, you didn't establish this policy, but that's one of the reasons being, you know, the sixth largest city in the Commonwealth that I thought that we should bring this up. I'm sorry, did you want to say something? Well, I basically, Council, that's what we do today. If, if, as you know, every year the, the councilors are asked which streets in their wards they want paved. We, we determine if they're public or private. If they're private and it's a priority in your ward, we accept the street, and as money is available, that street would get paved. So accepting a whole lot of private ways, you gotta remember two things. One, that's an eminent domain taking and can require compensation. People, the people, the abutters to that street can require compensation. Uh, in addition, it's, uh, we, we accept the liability. We accept a, a whole lot of these streets and have only money to build one or two of them. Yes, the streets are deficient, but we're not liable for damages today. The day you accept it, the city accepts all liability. Oh, no, I understand what you're saying, and I'm not disagreeing with you. Uh, what, what, what I wanted to come out of this is, first of all, for people to understand that and realize that, and I believe that this is not, how uh, would I say, it's something that you learn, you know, in a few minutes or um, in a, a, but to me, getting that information out there in the first place would help people and empower them to understand further. The other part of all this is that in, for, in instances, people have, 
you know, gone to the law department w with their concerns, and in some instances, the city has been required to re make some reimbursements. So that was another situation that was interesting because that was brought up last week at a, uh, a sort of a campaign event. Well, there, and, there, is uh, a, there is a section of state law that allows a municipality to make certain repairs, not all, but certain repairs sure. on private ways. We've discussed this several times before. That's Chapter 40, Section 6N, which the city has never adopted. Okay, but thank that's you. another alternative okay. to, to have serious, serious deficiencies repaired. It does not include paving of the street. Thank you. And the other part is that I know that the, um, the head of the DPW, here, Larry Rowley, is here this evening. And the, the idea, again, was to let people learn about all this and understand it so we could begin maybe a better process or um, a, a, a remove some of the frustration that's completely justifiable for these individuals. And again, it, this is not a reflection on the DPW. Mm -hmm. It just, I mean, our I, environment. I didn't take it that way, Counselor. I'm sorry? I didn't take it as a reflection. Oh, no, 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 I did, and I wasn't, and it certainly wasn't meant to. But the idea was this continued frustration and in so many instances, I realize too now we have an extra battle with these GPSs. Now we have people cutting through with 18 wheelers on small residential streets and not only wrecking the streets further, but shaking up people's houses. So we're, we're, we're running into constant challenges and that, that, is, that is why I wanted this issue brought to everyone's attention. So no, I appreciate you um, coming out this evening and ad addressing our I'd, concerns. I'd urge Thank each you. council though to read, read the handout that I gave you, that which you oh, can yes. share with constituents and show them, you can provide them copies and show them what the procedure is and what is actually required for those streets to become public. But I'd caution you that every time we accept a street, we accept liability Certainly. and with limited funds yes. on how many streets we're gonna build in a year. Uh, you're accepting a lot of liability every time we accept a street where there is no funding to pave that street. And just some background. Before Prop 2 and a half came in, when I came here, we'd survey in-house, sure. survey and, and draw plans for 25 to 30 streets a year. And those streets would be accepted in, in the fall and, and the winter months. And the appropriation to build all of those 25 or 30 streets would be made by the at that time. Nice, yeah. Uh, that can't happen. <coughs> we just don't have that kind of money. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Council, you may want to, Council Board Guide, since you filed this, you may want to speak with Mr. Santos in the mayor's office. Perhaps this could be put on the website so that it would be customer friendly okay, information. That's an idea too. Thank you. Um, with that being said, we're going to have Council Ian Airy fall by Nicastro, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, uh, Howard. How are you this evening? Um, I understand where my counselor is, is coming from in regards to, you know, the situation and, and people not understanding, you know, how we just do um, the layout and acceptance <coughs> of, um, of public ways and or private ways to public ways. It's something that I guess we all deal with as counselors and I've been dealing with it for, for 16 years, but I've always found that the method that we have, I think is, um, is, is working and I've always been uh, agreeable to what I've always done and by putting my request into um, the DPW commissioner and, and then to be shared with the, with the mayor and, and, uh, um, and I'm sure you play a role as well, especially if it's gonna be a street that needs to be accepted and we just this year had a street where we had to accept about 400 more feet so they could make that street completely repaved and not have to do what you call a you know, half bit type of a job, you know what I mean? So um, I, I, think, I think our challenge here is um, yeah, it's nice that we want everybody to know how it works and, and we want everybody to see just what's going on. And there's one comment I do want to make because there are some people, when you mention that the road is going to be repaved, they get very nervous about it because it becomes what? A speedway. Sure. I'm dealing with that as well with a, with a couple of streets. And uh, uh, the DPW commissioner and I were um, just on a street uh, not too long ago where I have people that go down that street and they use it as a... Uh, cut through type of way so they can drop the kids off to go to a school. And that's one of the things, one we're, of the we're having our, street being we're having our, it's open to anyone. our neighborhood streets being now drop off centers for, you know, going to kids going to school because they don't want to deal with the traffic that's in front of the school. Um, but to go back to what I, the point I really wanted to make, in order for us to do other streets, we need Sean Hell more than $2.1 million a year Correct. from Chapter 90 monies. Correct. I point. mean, we do. And I know it was great this year. The state brought us another $235,000. Whoop, whoop, do you do? 
we got maybe a half a street done somewhere. Congratulations. Uh, an example, I gave an example, I think, of, uh, we did a portion of Copeland Street this year. Uh, uh, just a portion, but not the whole street. But and I think that was a simple coal plated overlay, and that was over four hundred thousand dollars. Exactly, and but that's where our problem is right there. And there's seven wards, seven ward councillors. There's council at larges that also answer to the constituents' needs as well. Everybody wants to get three or four streets done in the course of a year. It's awful, awful difficult to do. What do we got? About three hundred miles of street, and, right. and maybe about fifty-seven miles of uh, of private way that aren't public yet? Yes, but those include things like paper streets and paper streets and everything. It's actually yeah. far less than that. It's a, it's so, a huge problem. Uh, the money, the problem is obviously is money. Money on all of uh, isn't there. It can't right. be, you, you can't, you can only raise a certain amount through taxation. And if we, and, uh, if we were to do. The 90 formula is a complicated one. If we were to do all of them, we'd need more than even the 2.1. I mean, you'd need most, most likely, at least if we could have about a good seven to $8 million each year, we might get a little bit more accomplished than what we're, we're doing, but we're, so we don't have that. When, you know, even when I came here 16 years ago, I think the first highest hit was about 2.6 million. I think Jack Eunice was able to have, and then it, it diminished one, one year. We only had about 1.8 million to work with. Correct. And we didn't, we didn't, what did we get? Not too much, but um, I understand what she's she's you know bringing the attention to, to the people, and, and um, I think this is a, a great handout. I do have one at home you gave me some time ago. I think it's something that definitely well needs to be um, you know shared with the when you have a ward meeting or whatever. But um, my my biggest concern is we need the money, and we need the people at the state level to bring us in more money, and with that we can do a, a whole heck of a lot. But I appreciate you for coming in tonight, anyways, Not to explain it. And I can, I. Didn't have time to make copies because there's so many pages. Uh, I do have a list of all of the private ways in the city uh, that I can leave with you people and Thank you can you get them out to the council. Right. Uh, Thank I you. I have a current list of all of the public streets in the city. If you if you have interest in that, uh, I can leave that. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a great tool that we could all have and everyone can actually see. And I don't know if that does the list. Um, yeah, well, if you're going to be private or public, because I know the list I have at home just gives me a whole configuration some, of, some of the streets that are by the way that are on the private private way list there's about five of them that are currently before council right and that's another thing oh, those have been before council now for I, I mean I it, it's tough it, three months it, ago. and that doesn't mean that everything's going to be accepted a, a private way you know a near way never got accepted that and look what, what I went through. Is there's five out sitting in council waiting now and you can imagine if all of a sudden there was 255 right Thank you, Howard. I Council, appreciate it. What was it. that road that didn't get accepted? A Neary Way. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, off of West Chester. Off of West Chester. Chester. I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. They even had a, a sign year, on it. Just, a, just about a year ago. <laughs> I remember that. Council Castro, please. Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for being here. And as you know, this is a big issue for me in Ward 4. Um, and, and, you know, I respect all that my counselors are saying but I just so see it from the point of view of my mm. residents because in some instances they, they were, they're bought houses in subdivisions, they have lovely homes, they keep them up well and their streets look like lunar surfaces. Um, and that's because the developers back in the day, none of you were here then, maybe you were Howard, <laughs> but not the, rest, not the rest of us, the developers were not required to, to post. You had to remind me of that, right? Pardon? You had to remind me of that. <laughs> um, Thank God we have you, though, Howard. You're like everybody's memory and history for the city. I um, and I, you know I always tell you that. But, but developers were allowed to not post bonds, and they didn't finish the streets, and they didn't do them properly, and they didn't put in curbs, and so on and so forth. And there was a time when the city looked the other way on those things. If and I think in Council, Ward 4... If, if they asked for... I, yeah, I was here during the Campanelli era. <laughs> And it wasn't the developer didn't put them in. They didn't put them in because they asked for waivers from, from the planning board, and the planning board gave the waivers. Right. So it, it's difficult in, the, in instances like that to, de, to uh, decry the developer because he asked for it. I did, it's the city's problem because we gave it. That's right. Sh and, and ultimately today, under, under the complete streets ordinance that was passed, right. that, that burden is going to fall on us now rather than the, rather than the developer. 
and it's very expensive to build sidewalks and curbs and things of that nature. Yes, and, and uh, Mr. Rowley and I just had a conversation about that because on well-settled streets in Ward 4 like Carl Avenue and increasingly East Street, our children are taking their lives in their hands walking without sidewalks. Correct. And and we've got to do something about it before we have a fatal in injury. That's right. So I just wanted to say I, I totally understand the the crunch of the expense for the city, but I also think our our residents deserve more and my, my word for residents deserve more. And that's why I will be filing a few of these in the near future. Thank you. So I warned you. Thank you. Again, uh, we can accept all the streets we want, but when we accept a street without the funds to pave it, we're accepting liability, and that can be a big issue. You're right. Thank we you. are then responsible for every single deficiency in that, in that street because it's now public property. And I've tried to caution before, we've accepted lots of streets knowing that it would be years before we could get to them. We may be liable already on the theory of we knew or should have known about Private the Private ways we are not liable for. Mm -hmm. We do, we do um, plow private ways, though. We plow all private ways. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, but we do. Mm -hmm. Middleborough, for instance, in their budget crunch back four or five years ago, they stopped plowing all private ways. Mm -hmm. It became the responsibility of the property owners. Thank you very much. I don't agree with that, but, uh, but sure. it's a fact. Yes, yes. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Falwell, please. Uh, just briefly, Mr. Newton, it would be tens of millions of dollars if we were to, en masse, try to address all of the streets that need to be addressed. Think, Am I correct? I think at one time, Bob had a number at the time just to pave the streets that were already public was in that, in that range. Okay. I, I, I think the frustration here is that the residents on a private way pay the same taxes and <laughs> tax rate as anyone else. And, uh, and, uh, and again, there's, there's, you know, there's all kinds of case law on that. I, I, I understand, and, but, but I, you know. I don't necessarily agree with it. I mean, if, we had the, if we had the millions of dollars, I'd be ha the, the DPW, I'm sure, would be happy to be out there building streets. But just morally and ethically, I think that's why some of us feel some a lot of compassion for people. I'd like to jump ahead to today. A new development goes in, four or five houses, new road. Uh, is the planning board holding the developer's feet to the fire and they have they to- are, yes. And they have to lay out the roadway and has to be acceptable standards for a new road? Oh yeah, it has to, st it has to stand, the planning board has rules and regulations for subdivisions. Uh, any developer that can come in with a subdivision and ask for a waiver of certain requirements, and the planning board has the right under their rules and regulations to waive certain requirements. But, that, but to my knowledge, they're not waiving much of anything today. They're not waiving much of anything. All right, and do they're we? Not, and, they're not waiving. Uh, and do we require a bond? Rights. Pardon? Do we require bonds, if you know, from the uh, developer yeah. that they will? We have to. That's state law. Okay, and Either how? The bonds or, or covenants, which, which we've done in the past, that uh, you can't build on any lot until it's released by the planning board. How uh, long do we hold the bond? Until the, uh, until the subdivision is completed. Now, the, it's not always a cash bond or, or, or a bond from an insurance company. Another way that they can indemnify themselves to the city is to uh, enter into a covenant agreement whereby you can't get a building permit on any lot, at one, until all of the services are in to service that lot, and then the lot has to be released from the covenant by the planning board. Okay. They cannot obtain a building permit until that happens. And, and that's been the most common way that developers have have have, bo have bonded themselves to the city, not with a cash bond usually. But so there's really no mechanism to hold, we for own, example, we, for yeah. five or ten years to make sure the roadway holds up. It's really once the project is done, we release the bond. Once the planning board gives a final release on the subdivision, that we're on our own, or the the residents are on their own. Okay. Thank you very there much. There are, by the way, there are uh, several streets in the city which cannot be accepted. They were built uh, under a different standard uh, back when we had the residential, uh, senior residential communities and things. There were two two options that a developer could have. One, if the, the you could have a narrower street if the street was never going to be accepted by the city, and there are some of those in the city. Okay. I guess last question for Commissioner Raleigh. 
When these new developments go in and these roads are being constructed, do we have someone go out and maintain compliance checks that everything is being done according to the standards that are required? Yes, we do, um, because I have to write, write a letter releasing their foot so they can get their bond money. So I have been sending out our engineers to make sure that that's built to the spec of the plan. Okay. That Thank never was done before. It's, we just started doing that probably a year ago. Good. I, I think that's a very good idea. That's yeah, no, because yeah. we inherit it after, so I want to make sure that that road is built to what it was supposed to be built by. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Cameron. you, Councilor. Councilor, any new questions before follow-ups? Seeing none, Councilor Beauregard, please. Thank you. Again, thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I'm, I'm just curious. Why do we keep the paper streets? Excuse me? Why do we keep the paper streets, then? I can't hear it. Why do we keep the paper streets? Yeah, you know, you said that they, they were just put on there for decades ago and that nothing, you know, transpires on these streets. I'm just curious, why they, do they continue being listed? Mm. I, I'm still not clear on what the, you the pa you know. some, Most of the paper streets, Council, are, are wooded areas that were probably the street was supposed to be built through. And that's what not. I thought. So okay. that's what a lot of these are. Um, and some of them can't go now because they could either be landlocked or whatever. So then why do we keep, keep them So there listed? is a mechanism to abandon it. For that portion of it. There are lots on these streets, even though they're paper streets and probably will never be built. There are multiple property owners, so you can't just do away with the streets. Point okay. of information yep. through, through you to Council Beauregard. Council Lowry. Um, I think it's not that we, we haven't gotten rid of them, but we should have. It's that there's no need to get rid of them. Uh, they're not doing anything. They're not hurting anyone. And in some cases, as as Howard said, we we you know can't do it because they're owned by somebody no, currently. We, if it's a public street, we don't own it. Well, yeah. If it's, yeah, if it's paper, yeah. We don't own it. Yeah. So it's streets, all we do is take an easement. So we yeah. don't really own the street. We take an easement. Yeah, so uh, but on a private way, someone has rights. All of the abutters to a private way have rights in that street. We don't. Yeah. So it's not it's not something that we can. Simply, so it's not it's not uh, a lack of due diligence that has caused these paper streets to remain. Um, it's that the, for the most part, we don't really need to do anything about them, and we've got uh, other other fish to fry as as a councillor who also has a lot of a lot of roads in need of in need of work. Thank you, councillor. Councillor Nicastro, did you have a point of information as well? I did. I just wanted to say that at com echoing what Mr. Newton said at common law. Everyone who abuts a paper street has rights in it to the middle of it. Oh, any private way. That's right. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to understand. Right. When you say the paper street, that there could be lots and they're paying on taxes it. on so those lots, even though there is no street there. Mm -hmm. There's no houses there either. But they are, you have people who own those the lots. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to make clear because you know that's I was oh that's just a paper street oh that's just a paper street and paper then street is just a street that does not exist on the ground. Right. It only exists somewhere on a plan that was recorded right. at the Registry of Deeds. No, that, that part I understood, but I just, that was th the reason being is that you, you never eliminated when, them when, is because there was... When you see this list, you'll, you'll see that there are that. like 197 paper streets in the city. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? I entertain a motion. Go back to the full city council for favor second. recommendation. This motion made was probably second favorable. Back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Favorable back to the council. Thank you, Mr. Excuse Newton. me. So that was favorable back to the council? Yes. Okay. So we're going to accept all these. Th this is an order. Oh, it's an order. Right. Totally yeah. so. Huh? Correct. It's an order. Right. We're just, we're just accepting the order to go back to the council. It, with a positive recommendation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Order number five, please. Ordered that the sum of four million nine hundred thousand dollars is appropriated to pay costs of sewer system re rehabilitation work, including but not limited to projects designed to address sources of exfiltration, infiltration, and inflow, and sections of undersized pipe, and for the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 44, Sections 7 and 8, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore. Invited Troy Clarkson, CFO, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner, 
David Norton, water sewer contract. Uh, so we're going to take a two minute recess before we go into the next agenda item. Back into session before we go to the next agenda item that was already read into the record, Council Falwell. Mr. Chairman, I think we inadvertently voted to favorably recommend accepting every street, so I'm going to move reconsideration Second. on uh, item number four. It's a motion on four uh, for reconsideration. All in favor, and it was properly seconded. All in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hand. All opposed? Okay, reconsideration does prevail. Council Falwell. Uh, well, I'm going to move favorably. Procedurally, yes, procedurally. Procedurally, I'm going to move a favorable recommendation. However, I am not going to vote favorably Second. because I, I yes. on the motion, I, I just don't think we have the money of the plan in place right now. I think the mayor was getting ready to resign over there. Uh, so, uh, uh, it, th look. This motion issue, on the floor. Motion on the it floor. It was seconded. Yeah. It's a favorable recommendation back to the council. If you want it to go back to the council favorable, raise your hand. Okay. If you want to send it back unfavorable, raise your hand. It does not go back favorable. It goes back to the full council. Unfavorable. Thank you. Number five was already read in. And the invited guests, Mr. Clarkson, Mr. Rowley, Mr. Norton, and I know we have our esteemed mayor here as well. Thank you for being here, Mayor Rodriguez. Commissioner. Good evening again, councillors. Um, councillors, if, if this is approved, this money will go towards um, the cleaning and TV in of 25 miles of street. Um, and we're going to have to do some sewer manhole rehab work and also some open cut work. This will probably be a three year project. I want to stage it in three phases um, because we have to do some open cut work, which, when I mean open cut work, is we have to dig and replace some undersized mains that we have in the Brookfield section of the city. They're just too small now to handle the, what, what the households give us. And um, we're just trying to tighten the system a lot more for the I and I that we have to treat down at the sewer plant. So with that being said, um, when I say open cut work also, if we have to dig the road up, we're gonna pave it from curb to curb. There will be new pavement of some roads. So any questions? Mr. I'll be Cruz, glad please. to answer them. Thank, Thank you. you Mr. Riley. So this, and this may be for Mr. Clarkson, this should actually, even though we're bonding this, should be paid out of the sewer enterprise fund, correct? Good evening, Troy Clunk, uh, Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. To answer the Councilor's question, yes. And we've been working with the, the Treasurer and our Finance Advisor on a long-term debt management plan uh, for the City and for the enterprise funds. So I can tell you with confidence that uh, not only will the principal and interest be paid out of the sewer enterprise fund, but we have a significant, a precipitous drop off in debt coming uh, about five years from now. So I, I can tell you with confidence that 
we can borrow this money and then pay the principal and interest back without an impact on the sewer rates. Without an impact without on the sewer rates. Without an impact rates. on the sewer rates. So our, our total principal and interest uh, debt payments uh, right now are uh, about $6.4 million. Uh, in fiscal year 2026, there's a precipitous drop off of over a million dollars a year in principal and interest payments. We can temporarily borrow till then. This will cost us approximately $375,000 a year. So we should be able to manage our debt sufficiently uh, that we can do this project and not impact the rates. How much money does the sewer enterprise fund owe the general fund over the last years? The sewer fund, actually, it's the water fund that has struggled to pay back it, its, uh, its payments. The sewer fund is current with its payments to, to, to the general fund. Okay. Now let me ask you a question that might be for either the law department or where we have substandard sewer lines. I, well, I think you just answered it a minute ago, but so where we have to dig and replace those lines, we will also be rebuilding those streets. Yes. So it's a double, it's a double win. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we any, anything we do now between water and sewer related, it's going to be um, completely paved curb to curb. And what I mean by that, if the road's in good shape, we'll just do a grind and overlay. If it's not, then we'll, we'll do an R&R, &R, remove and replace. Uh, uh, full we'll know that one as we're digging. Okay, and um, what happens, not to open a second can of worms that we just talked about, what happens if some of these substandard lines are on a private way? Well, we're going to have to, get, well, the, the work we do there, Council, we're going to have to pave them. I'm not so we'd be leave, doing that any? Yeah, because uh, I'm not going to leave a road in, dis, in disrepair, disrepair, even so though it's private or, or public. So in some cases where we have substandard we, sewer yes. lines, We'll be doing that without accepting the street, or would we have to accept the street? Um, that's a good question for the law Wait, office, but point as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to pave it. Okay, great. And right now, just to, the sewer enterprise fund is current with the general fund? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank Council, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council Lally, did you have? Um, I do want to say that there is precedent for the city uh, maintaining and replacing pipes um, on private roads. We are allowed, or we have done in the past, uh, replaced pipes on several streets, at least that I know of, uh, where they've had to do the job completely over. Um, but either way, I think this is, this is something very necessary, uh, especially for the Brookfield area. They have a lot of problems, water, sewer, and the roads in general. Uh, so again, I appreciate all the work you're doing, Commissioner, and I'm absolutely in favor of this. Yeah, because Councils, last year we did a, a citywide sewer flow report, and that's how we know where these impact areas are, and a lot of them are up in Ward 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've, you know, the first phase of work, we want to get the worst, worst one done first. Thank you, Council. Council Nicastro, fall by Fowell, please. Oh, no, thanks. I'm no, fine. Fowell, fall by Borgard, please. I, I think you answered it. So you were very helpful to Councilor Lally and me with respect to a couple of families up in Ward 6. We'll, we'll target yes. the areas that you have listed as backup uh, prevalency. That's where we're going. Right. That's our first. That would be my first phase to get done, the Hubbardton Street area. Okay. All in through there. Thank you. I think you. we have to go from uh, LC down to Winter, the intersection there. And we have to increase the size of the sewer main. That will help. Okay. Uh, Good. Okay. Thank you, Council. Council Borgard. Thank you. That was my question too. The location. So now you just said Ward Six. That's one of the areas. Yes. Yes. Um, one, or any in Ward Five that you could think of off the top of your head? Mm -hmm. um, Elisa Drive area. Is that you? I'm sorry. No, that's six. six. Okay. You in Crestfield Drive area? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, Crestfield Drive and the Quincy Street area. Thank you. And some of Plymouth Street and Perkins Street and Otis Street. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Commissioner? Motion to recommend favorable. Second. Second. Motion on the floor is properly second favorable. Back to the full council. Thank you. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. It's favorable back to the council. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. We'll go on to number six, please. 
ordered that the City Council amends the Water Purchase Agreement, which originated on May 22, 2002, and was amended on September 6, 2018, between the City of Brockton and Aquaria, LLC. Invited Honorable Mayor Moses Rodriguez, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nasrella, City Solicitor, Lawrence Rowley, DPW Commissioner, David Norton, Water Sewer Contract Administrator, Moses Parente, General Manager, Aquaria Water, LLC. Mr. Mayor, good evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, good evening. And I do know we have gentlemen from Aquaria here as well, so uh, thank you for being here. Mo Moses, uh, uh, I think uh, Parente is no longer, with, I believe, with the company, so Mr. Ramon and uh, Alfredo is here. Um, Councilors, as you know, uh, several months ago, count, uh, Mayor Carpenter had come before us with a uh, proposal to amend the uh, contract with Aquaria, between Aquaria and the City of Brockton, and they were, they actually was a proposal to reduce the fixed cost by $450,000, and I think it failed. It failed in the Council by a six to five vote or something like that at the time. So um, when I first got into the mayor's office, I went back to the folks at Aquaria and an attempted to renegotiate that order. And I believe that what we came up with is a lot more suitable to the city, a lot more beneficial to the city. So I'm here to uh, ask for your approval on the amendment, uh, just to give you a little bit of a, a background in what we are actually proposing to get from Aquaria is instead of $450,000, we're gonna get a half a million dollars from them. Uh, we're also gonna get another $140,000 from, uh, from them as we, uh, we will not be needing <coughs> this Gunder Boom system that they have in place. Uh, that will be um, uh, a benefit to the community, uh, but also of a great importance, uh, the city is uh, bound to get somewhere around 80 million gallons of water a year. As you know that what I often call our membership fee to Aquaria uh, in tune of close to seven million dollars a year, that's just a membership fee where we get absolutely no water from them. But at least uh, with this new uh, amendment, we're gonna get somewhere around 80 million uh, gallons of water. Which also would actually uh, free us up from, uh, you know, as you know, every year when we, uh, when we do the budget, we put some money in, in the budget to purchase water. So it will be an added savings because we no longer have to do that as we are getting some water for our membership fee. Mm -hmm. So when it's all said and done, we're looking at over a million plus dollars in savings to the city of Brockton from this contract. And with that, I'm gonna pause and uh, not take too much more of our time since we do have a football game later on today. <laughs> <coughs> Any questions for the mayor? Council Fowler, please. Oh, just great job. You were with us when some of us took a lot of heat for not jumping at that 450,000, but uh, uh, I thank Aquaria for working with the city. And I look forward, if this is adopted, to the remainder of the contract being much more beneficial to the taxpayers. And I think uh, that will be, Councilor. I think it I, will I, be. I, I have we'll no doubt continue to it, do so. what we can to help the, uh, to, look, to look out for the taxpayers in this no. community. Thank you. Any other questions? Motion. Uh, Councilor Castro, please. Sorry. This is very important. Um, good evening. I, I do evening, have questions. Council. Um, I'm wondering, what was our, the city's average daily use in 2018? Well, uh, from who? From Aquaria or from the overall usage of water? Aquaria. Well, I don't, I think uh, Commissioner uh, Rowley, still around, do you know? Uh, as you know, uh, Councillor, I wasn't around <laughs> in the mayor's office in 2018, so I'm going to Brought the, back up. That's okay. I brought back up. Good. Councilor, I, I don't know the exact figures. I can get them for you. Yes. We, we didn't. We didn't use it a lot. In last year. Last year. And how about this year? This year we just started taking. Um, when was it? We're taking a million and a half a day, and we're and we're getting it now. When did we take this out? Three weeks ago. So since September. Okay. And what about the fish egg issue? Where's that at? Excuse me? 
the fish egg issue at low tide. Well, that, that's what this whole plan is about, that they won't have to put the gundaboom back in because right. we won't draw water for the six weeks that the, the white perch spawning. or the larvae are spawning. Yes. Um, but in case of an emergency, for some reason that Silver Lake goes down, we can take water from them. That's already been approved by all the state regulators. Okay. And um, what about at low tide? We still can't take water from it at low tide. Right? Yeah, yes, yes. You can? Yes, that's the best time for us to take it. Yeah, oh. so because of the salinity is so low. Right. Sorry. I have a question, sorry. With the removal of the restrictions, uh, the only time we cannot take water would be during the uh, six week spawning Fine. season. But with the removal of the gunder boom, we are able to take water at different times of the day. It's not so limited to a specific time of day. So So we removed the gunder boom and but we still have the Baudry intake system? No, the Baud the Baudre is not part of this. It's not uh, that's not going to be implemented. Okay. With uh, we had uh, discussed it with all the commission the the water resource commission uh, and uh, who was the other company and, and the city, and uh, we don't need that. If we have our restriction for those six weeks, um, the environmentalists are fine with it. So we don't need any other filtration other than what we already have. Yet if we hit a jam here, we can still draw from it during that, that spawning period? Yes, it's in case of an emergency, yes. Okay. Now we will be, we, we have been given permission to draw during that spawning season for us to maintain the effectiveness in the, in, the, in the pipelines and keep the pipelines flush for, right. for whenever water is called for from the city. Okay, and when will the scheduled maintenance take place during that time that it's down? The scheduled maintenance for? For the system. We, we spent a lot of time in 2018 talking about scheduled maintenance. That would be for the gunder boom, right? Well, the, the, the scheduled maintenance for the, in the plant is an ongoing, an ongoing process. I think maybe what we're talking about is the scheduled maintenance for the gunder boom, which is done in November when we remove it. Right. And then that needs to get replaced, and then it gets put back in, uh, re repaired and replaced, and put, gets put back in in March. And we don't have that issue anymore. We don't have anymore. that issue anymore. Okay. Um, and then... A backup source of water is still considered 10 million gallons per day, isn't it? Uh, no, Councilor, this is our second source of water, the Aquaria plant. Okay. At a backup, a at backup if we have to, we have our, our, our standpipe where our tanks would last for a day if, if we didn't have any water coming into the city. Okay. And, and if, if we can't get that, then we, we have some other hookups with some other towns that we could probably get water from them. Okay. I'm just reflecting on my notes from last year where uh, someone identified a backup source equaling 10 million gallons per day. And yet this amendment number two specifies 3.81 million gallons per day. How much? Isn't it? 3.81? million gallons per day, right? Yes, that's what the aquaria plant can produce right yes. now. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Motion to recommend favorably. On the motion. Um, I just want to thank the mayor. Uh, when he sat in his chairs, we had many, many conversations about aquaria, and I do want to thank aquaria for stepping up. One thing that I wanted to note, which actually is even more beneficial, and thanks again to the mayor, when we look at the 80 million gallons of free water, if you look at page three at the top, there's a rollover clause there. So if we go less, it's gonna carry over to the next year, so that's a win-win. And then if you look at the last uh, 5.44, in terms of the 140,000 credit, there's also gonna be an escalator, which is an annual under the PPI. So kudos to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. It does help the taxpayers, it does help the residents, and I wanna thank the gentleman and my only question to the gentleman is how we how are we doing in terms of how are you doing in terms of marketing to other municipalities we have not been really marketing to other other municipalities at this time okay fair enough thank you mm -hmm. thank you thank you again there's a motion on the floor it was properly seconded it's a favorable back to the full council all in favor please raise your hand 
All opposed, that motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Favorable back to the full council. We're gonna go on to the next agenda item, please. Ordered that the city, excuse me, that the Brockton City Council, acting on behalf of the city of Brockton, approve the request of a right of easement for National Grid as approved by the Park Commission in its meeting of September 12, 2019, as stipulated. Invited Timothy Car Carpenter, Superintendent of Parks, Peter Ng, National Grid. Mr. Carpenter, good evening. Before good evening. you talk, I just wanted to remind my counselors or inform my counselors, Joe Cardinal from National Grid had emailed me earlier today. He also had a conflict. He apologized for not being here, but he had uh, full faith and confidence in Mr. Carpenter on this matter. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good evening, counselors. Um, I have given you all information uh, in regards to this particular agenda item. Uh, I apologize for getting it to you this evening uh, and not prior to. Um, however, this is an easement for uh, the installation of some above ground equipment over in the corner of GAR Park, which as you know, is right out here of City Hall. Um, and this is part of the ongoing commitment from National Grid to ease the manhole uh, issue uh, in the city, from what I understand, and I'm not an engineer, but uh, that is the purpose of the above ground equipment. Move Any favorable. Questions? Second. So motion made was properly second favorable to the full council. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Mr. Thank Kaplan, you. Thank you. Favorable back to the full council. Number eight, please. Ordered, a copy of all legal documents executed between the city of Brockton and the Brockton B21 Century Corporation related to the transfer of control for those pro properties to the city and the outstanding promissory note signed by the corporation be provided to the city council. One, a summary of all outstanding contractual agreements, outstanding invoices for services or goods, or any other liability Chairman, which was responsibility. Madam Clerk, mm -hmm. this is gonna be beneficial to you, yes. May, may I uh, move to waive reading and <laughs> postpone this matter to a FinCom meeting in November. The final audit for 2018 from Brockton 21st Century Corporation is not ready yet. And I don't want us to spend a lot of time yes. on a draft audit if figures could change, information could change, that's the reason for the motion to postpone. Duly noted. So there's a motion, two motions. The first one is to waive reading. All in favor of waiving the reading. All opposed, it's gonna waive. And then we just have to do a date certain. Do you wanna go to the second? Second FinCom in November to give ample time. So motion to postpone was properly seconded to uh, have this, uh, the second FinCom in November. All, all in favor of that motion? All opposed, that motion carries. Number eight is gonna be continued or postponed until the second FinCom in the month of November. Thank you. Number nine, please. Ordered, acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of $9,997.05 from Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency Fiscal Year 2018 Emergency Management Performance Competitive Grant to Brockton Emergency Management Agency Fiscal Year 2018 Emergency Management Performance Competitive Grant Fund. Invited Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Stephen Hook, Director of BEMA. Mr. Hook, good evening. Good evening, Mr. President, City Council members. Uh, this is just a grant, a competitive grant, uh, up to $10,000 from leftover FY18 funding. Move to uh, recommend favorable. Second. second. This motion on the floor, probably second and favorable back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. Thank favorable you. back to the council. Thank you, Mr. Hook. Have a good evening. Go on to number 10, please. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the total grant funds in the amount of $12,000 from Massachusetts Department of Public Health Bureau of Substance Abuse Addiction Services, BSAS, fiscal year 2020, first responders naloxone grant, to Brockton Police Department, fiscal year 2020, first responders naloxone grant fund. Invited Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Chief, excuse me, Stephen Williamson, Acting Chief of Police, and Michael Williams, Chief of Fire. Chief Williams, Acting Chief Williamson, good evening. Thank you for both being here tonight. <clears throat> Any statement on these chiefs? This is an annual grant that the police department received. Move to recommend favorably. Second. Cut you off, Mike. Do you have anything else to say on that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so motion on the floor is properly second favorable back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed? A motion carries. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, gentlemen. We'll go on to the, uh, I believe, the last agenda item for the evening. Ordered that pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 268A, the City Council hereby designates the position of outside counsel to the City Law Department and the City Clerk's Office as a special municipal employee. Invited Philip Nazrella, City Solicitor, Anthony Zioli, City Clerk. Good evening, Councilors. Good evening, Attorney. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Um, 
I, I had uh, some brief discussion with Clerk uh, Zioli about this. I think that uh, it is meritorious, uh, looking at it from the aspect of the Law Department, that since I had become city solicitor, one of my objectives was to engage and uh, hire, as outside lawyers, some of our very talented pool from Plymouth County, but a lot of them were reluctant that they would be conflicted out from going before any of the administrative boards if they were working on a case for the city. I think this alleviates and removes that problem where um, I can uh, negotiate with, with local council, perhaps uh, with more accessibility and a better price range than I, I could without this particular provision. Council Fowler, thank you. I know there may be other reasons for this, but it also has a beneficial effect for the law department as well. <clears throat> Mr. Solicitor, uh, you know, I've been here almost four years, and I guess people haven't caught on yet that to give us a three-line order with no backup material prior to this evening other than your presentation on a, on a uh, let me finish, on a sensitive matter, I, I just, I think it doesn't reflect well towards what role the council plays, and, and I really think it makes it look as though no one had the, the, either the interest or wanted to expend the effort to bring something forward. So having said that, I spent considerable time on the phone today with the State Ethics Commission. The special municipal employee designation ordinarily would go to an employee of the municipality. Anyone in that same classification, in that category, would automatically fall in that special employee designation category. This appears to be aimed at outside counsel whom you may hire, and the Ethics Commission said, by all means, you have every right to say who you're talking about and what is the matter, not what is the matter, but what is the legal matter to which you think that this applies and is necessary. I'm not interested in giving every attorney in Plymouth County who may or may not work for the city special municipal employee status. As a matter of fact, I don't like weakening ethics laws at all. Um, I saw the notation in the position of outside counsel of the law department and the city clerk's office as a, uh, hereby designates outside counsel to the city law department and the city clerk's office as a special municipal employee. I talked to Shannon Resnick tonight. She knows nothing about being designated a special employee. It wasn't consulted, no one talked to her, and, uh, you know, very respectfully, in my opinion, folks, this should wait until after January. At some point, we're going to have a new mayor, whomever that is. That person should be able to get together with Attorney uh, Solicitor Nesralla, decide what they want to do for the law department. But not knowing any names, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to vote for a blanket exemption for anybody that may be contracted to do legal work for the city so that they can then turn around and do other legal work. This doesn't help the city. It helps the attorney who can maintain a private practice and still do work for us. Well, can I respond? Please do. Uh, your point's well taken, and I preface my remarks by stating I don't know how this was drafted, who drafted it, what the intent was. So when I looked at it a short time ago that I was at the podium tonight to talk about this, I was looking at it and my comments were in relation to my office. I don't know what brought rise to this. It wasn't our office that created this, had any interest in it. But while it was on the agenda, I said it serves a double purpose, selfishly thinking it helps the law department where we can bring in another attorney because the term special municipal employee does not refer to an attorney, it refers to a class of employees. That's correct. It could be any attorney. And instead of going to Boston or wherever, I could take a guy or a woman from, you know, around the corner and hire them. That's the limited way in which I was looking for this. That's, and I, that's without debating or disagreeing with anything you said. But that was the, uh, uh, the concern or the interest I had from my end. If there's some other issue, agenda, or purpose related to another department or office, I can't help you on that. Well, did, let me respond by saying I think the real issue is reorganize the law department and you need to hire more full-time assistant city solicitors who have specialized 
training and experience in the areas that you determine we need them the most, whether it's collective bargaining, whether it's environmental law, whether it's uh, federal uh, pleadings, that's what really needs to be done. But the Ethics Commission said that you, we, as a council, have every right to say, have the person that you have in mind, that you th if, if you were going to go forward with this, have the person you have in mind write to the Ethics Commission, outline all of the facts and circumstances, ask if it would be proper for them to be a special municipal employee designated by the council, but then they would have to share whatever correspondence they received because we aren't privy to that. The Ethics Commission is not going to give us information about an opinion they render for someone else. But I, I go back to my original comment is, not enough information, not the right time to do this. The law department needs to be reorganized, and I'm going to move to postpone uh, indefinitely this matter. Well, you, you'd have to table things, Council. I know Robert's rules you couldn't postpone. It has to be a date, sir. I'm going to move to table. Is there a second on that? But before I do, because once we make the, once we second Right, we can't talk that. about it on the Robert's rules once it's a second on the table. Pr prior to seconding that, um, in the past, whenever we've done special employee, it's been an individual. I, I'm not comfortable with the blanket idea without knowing a little more about this also, because we have done special city employees in certain situations, but it's to that individual. Yep. And the blanket idea is, I, I think I need to get more information also, so I will second that. Oh. oh, you caught me. I was going to say something, but that's all right. I'll withdraw my second. Oh, no, no, that's okay. It's tabled. Uh, there was a motion on the floor properly seconded to table. All in favor? All opposed? Matters tabled. No further discussion on it. Thank you for being here, Attorney Nazarella. Councilors, um, before we go through uh, any uh, moments of what do we call now? Council recognition? Yes. Uh, I just want to, again, follow past practice and make you aware two weeks from tomorrow is the city general election. We will not be having a finance committee meeting the night before. Uh, which would be November 3rd, Monday night. We will not be having a FENCOM, so please put that in your calendar. If we need to make one up, we can call one at a later date. The chair will do that. Um, but please, if you could duly note that, much like we did in September, we're going to follow that in November. Anything else before us? Uh, Councilor Azak, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, point of parliamentary inquiry. Um, Ooh, that was even better, Shirley. I like that one. All right. It was the help of Councilor Cruz. Oh, so. that's fancy. Um, actually, I would um, just like to ask Councillor uh, Nicastro, who is the chair of real estate, when we are going to have a real estate committee meeting. I have a matter that's been long awaiting a meeting. It's from last year regarding a lot on Battle Street. So I don't think Councillor Nicastro heard me. But Councillor um, Nicastro. Did yes. you hear the inquiry? I'm sorry, I it's did It's about not. being the chair of the real estate. When you'll call another real estate committee, there's I'll some matters pending. I'll be calling a meeting next week. Uh, please, because we have a matter that's available. long waiting. Thank you for the gentle reminder. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council Fowell, please. Ordinance committee meets Wednesday, the 23rd, 6 p.m. here in council chamber. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. Want to thank the mayor again for being here tonight. Meeting's adjourned.